A tough presidential campaign, America's oldest ever leader seeking a second term, facing serious questions about his physical and mental competence. Sound familiar? You ain't seen nothing yet. 73-year-old Ronald Reagan needed to make a good show against his younger opponent at 1984's first presidential debate. What leadership characteristics do you possess that Mr. Mondale does not? They've always been very important in terms of style and assessing a candidate's performance. They're not usually remembered much for their substance. First of all, I think you must have some principles you believe in. America has been here before, and so has Kim Hoggard. The Sydney woman was assistant press secretary in the Reagan White House. He had been doing mock debates, sequestering with staff and going through pretty thick briefing books, five-inch briefing books on all sorts of statistics and economic detail in preparation for that debate. But instead of quietening concerns about his age, Reagan amplified them. It just doesn't work out that way. The system is still where it was with regard to uh, the with regard to the, the uh, progressivity, as I've said, and... Um, he appeared to be just rambling in his answers. He appeared to be uh, old. He uh, sometimes lost his train of thought. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. History may not repeat itself precisely, but it echoes down the decades making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. What were you thinking as you were watching it? Well, I was thinking about Reagan's first debate. And then as it went on, I was sort of watching it with my head in my hands because it was so frustrating to watch not only the president's performance, but the repeated lies uh, by President Trump. They talk about a relatively small number of people that went to the Capitol and in many cases were ushered in by the police. I've watched every debate live since the four Kennedy-Nixon debates in 1960. I have never seen a major party candidate do worse. And that's just the honest-to-God truth. Just really seeing it as a catastrophic political event, which put his campaign in existential danger. An Australian prime minister can be removed by their party quickly and ruthlessly. We've got a zip. The leadership and the government they deserve. The great difference between the United States and Australia and the political system is when your moment is passed in Australia, you are gone. And it can happen within 24 hours. The party cannot get rid of Joe Biden. The only way for a replacement of him would be if he steps aside. He won all the primaries, he has all the delegates, he will be the nominee, they will meet in convention in August. Even if Biden announced he won't seek re-election, his party is in trouble. Now, let's suppose he drops out. Then what the hell do Democrats do? I mean, there, there is no obvious candidate who can win. You would think the vice president would be the one to step into that position, and she might well get the nomination. But it will be difficult, and in some surveys at least, she's more unpopular than Biden is. Possible replacements include the governors of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, and California, Gavin Newsom. There are loads of Democrats who want to run, who are very able and I think could beat Trump, but they aren't necessarily going to step aside for one another. You could end up with four or five or six or more candidates running uh, in an open convention. Uh, their, their backers would be very enthusiastic but they'd also be fighting one another. And somehow they would have to mend all the wounds within four days and leave united. Making sure they were, the families were separated. If Biden continues, he'd need to convince voters that he's capable of leading the country for four more years. 
just like Ronald Reagan did in 1984 at his second debate with Walter Mondale. I recall yet that President Kennedy had to go for days on end with very little sleep during the Cuba Missile Crisis. Is there any doubt in your mind that you would be able to function in such circumstances? Not at all, Mr. Truitt, and I, and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> That changed everybody's image immediately in, in just a matter of seconds with one answer. Joe Biden may not be capable of that kind of bounce back. He's already eight years older than Reagan was in 1984 and less physically agile. Larry Sabato says Biden and his team have some explaining to do. What we have heard privately, that there have been other instances like this uh, in the past six months to a year. So this is a condition that's been developing, and yet he decided to run for re-election. Now, I don't have confirmation on that. I have no way to know. Only a handful of insiders, the ones who were briefing him at Camp David, probably know. Aided by a teleprompter and short daytime events, President Biden continues to campaign. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. The questions do need to be asked. What happened with the president on the night of the debate? Are there uh, ongoing physical ailments that could prevent him from conducting the uh, rigors of the office of the presidency, and if not, give us an explanation. And let's see from the president himself, and only he can decide on whether he should continue or not.